All right, guys, today we are going to talk about operators in Scratch. Okay, now there are three types of operators that uh, we will be talking about. The first one is arithmetic, second one is relational, and the third one is logical. So we will go over each of these types of operators. Uh, so let's start with arithmetic operators. All right, the arithmetic operators are these right here. Plus, minus, multiplication, division, and we will talk about one more called the mod operator. So let's begin by uh, writing over these, uh, the plus, the minus, the times, and the division, okay? So these are pretty straightforward. The plus will add two numbers together. So if I click on that, it'll say eight. The minus will subtract two numbers. Okay, three minus one is two. And this one here is the multiplication operator. Um, it's, you got this little asterisk, okay? Uh, so if we put in two times two, you will get four, okay? And now this one right here, that's the division. Four divided by two is equal to two, okay? Now, uh, the other thing they could do with, with operators is that you can combine um, multiple operators together. So for example, I could do this, right? I can do four plus two plus three plus one, okay? And you can see it's 10, okay? Um, I could do the same thing with, uh, you know, any of these other ones. For example, two times two times two is eight. Okay. All right. Very good. Now let's talk about the uh, mod operator. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these blocks. Let's drag over the mod operator. And uh, I'm also going to bring over the division operator uh, to, you know, give you an example of how the mod actually works. Okay, so the mod operator returns uh, the remainder between the division of two numbers. So for example, let's say I do 4 divided by 2, all right? So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and it has nothing left over, right? Because it, you know, 4 divides evenly into 2, so you have no remainders. Okay, so if I were to put 4 mod 2, and I click on this block, I will get a zero. Zero meaning that there's nothing left over, okay? Now, suppose I did five into two. That's 2.5, right? Two with the one left over, right? Because two times two is four. Five minus four is one, right? So it's two, remainder one. And then so if I put in five here, and I click on that, you'll see you'll get one. So you have one left over. Now, what if I did five into three? Okay, so let's try that here first. Let's put a three here. And if I click on that, you get one point, you know, six, 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 whatever, seven, right? So basically three goes into five one time, then you get, you know, some kind of remainder, some left over. Uh, so three into five is, you know, one with the remainder two, right? So if I do five mod three, as you can see, it says two, right? Because you have two left over. Um, suppose I do six into three, you get zero, right? Because uh, six divides evenly by three. Three times two is six, so you get remainder zero, okay? So if you want to check whether our number is even or odd, you can do that by putting a two here, Okay, and six into two, if I click that, it'll say zero, right? You have zero left over. If I did five into two, you get one left over. Okay, so you'll get a one or a zero when you do anything mod by two, okay? Anytime you do a mod by two, you will get either a one or a zero. One indicating that this is an odd number, zero mean it's an even number. So for example, if I were to do this, and I click on mod, it's zero, okay? That means this is an even number. What if I did 
something big like that, right? And I click on mod, it'll give me one, okay? Telling me that this is this number right here is an odd number. All right, so next, let's talk about relational operators. Relational operators are basically these right here. You use the relational operators um, for comparison to compare two things, okay? So, so for example, let's start with this one here first. Uh, greater than, okay, the greater than basically will compare two numbers. So if I were to put 34 is greater than 50, and I click on the block, you'll notice it says false, right? Because 34 is not greater than 50. So if I put in here 60 greater than 50, now it'll say true. Okay, so this will return either true or false, okay? Now let's try this one here, the less than. If I put 40 and I click on the block, it'll say true because 40 is less than 50. Now if I did 60, and I click on it, it'll say false, okay? Because 60 is not less than 50, so that's why it says false. All right, now the third one we have here is the equals operator. That equal will, you know, compare two things, okay? So if I were to put uh, 50, for example, and I click on it, it'll say true. 50 is equal to 50. Now what if I did 40 and I click on it? Now it'll say false because, um, 40 is not equal to 50, okay? Now, you can also use these, um, these operators to compare, you know, letters, for example. So, for example, if I say A is greater than B, it's, it'll say false, right? But if I put C is greater than B, it says true, okay? Because C actually comes after B in the alphabet, right? So, that's why I'm saying C is greater than B. Uh, we could do the same thing with the less than. We can also do the same thing with the equals. Then if I say R is equal to R, it says true, right? If I say R is equal to RR, it's false, right? Because um, obviously a single R is not equal to, you know, a double R. Now, what if I did capital R is equal to lowercase r? Let's see what happens then. It says true. So it, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't really care about the case and get if they're, you know, as long as they're the same letter, um, I guess it will return true. So if I do uppercase R, lowercase R, it still says true, okay? All right, so that's just some things to keep in mind if you're trying to compare words or sentences or letters that e these do work for those, okay? All right, so next we're going to talk about logical operators. Logical operators such as these ones right here, and or not, are used for combining two or more comparison operators. In other words, two or more conditions. All right, so let's take a look at what these do. Uh, let's start with the AND operator, okay? So with the AND operator, the con all the conditions that we are combining all have to be true. So what does that mean? Okay, well, let's take a look here, okay? So let's uh, go ahead and let's use the equals operator. We'll put that one in here. That we'll put this one in there. And let's say we want to do 50 is equal to 50 and 10 is equal to 10. Okay. So now what happens if I click on this block? It says true, right? Because this first condition, 50 is equal to 50, that's true. The second condition, 10 equals 10, that is also true. Therefore, the answer is true, okay? Because this is that and. And means this has to be true and this has to be true, okay? Both conditions have to be true. Now, what if I did over here, I did 15, okay? So obviously, 15 is not equal to 10, but 50 is equal to 50, right? So what happens if I click on this now? It says false. Why? Because this condition is false, this one is false, but this one is true, okay? With the AND, both conditions have to be true in order for the answer to equal true. Okay, so that's why if I change it back to 10 and I click on it, it'll say true. All right, so now 
let's look at the or. All right, so we'll take, let's do this. Let's go out and duplicate this, put it here. <laughs> duplicate this and put that here, okay. So now with the or operator, only one of the conditions being compared, um, being combined has to be true. So in other words, 50 equals 50 is true. 10 equals 10 is true, right? They're both true. So if I click on this, it'll say true. Now, what if I were to do 15 for this one, like we did boom, with the other one? Now, if I click on this, you'll notice it'll still say true. Why? Because this is true. 50 equals 50 is true. Therefore, it's going to say the or block is going to say true, okay? Because one condition is true. You only need one condition to be true for the or block. Now, what if I did 40 here? Okay, this is false. This is false. They're both false, right? So now if I click on or, it's going to say false, right? False or false equals false. All right. Now let's look at the not operator. So the not operator basically just flips the value around, okay? So if I say, so 50 equals 50 is true. If I say not 50 equals 50, this will say false, right? Basically the opposite of what it is, right? So if I say 40 equals 50, 40 equals 50 is false. But if I say not false, that means it'll say true, okay? So the not operator just flips the results around, okay? All right, so now let's look at one word thing, how we can combine multiple of writers together, right? So for example, I can do and, and, you know, I can combine two ends, right? And then we can say, we could put that here. And let's put this one here. So now what happens is that now we have three different conditions, right? We have one condition right here, two, and three. Okay, so we have three different conditions. So all three conditions have to be true in order for this whole thing to say true. All right, so 15. So for example, let's say 10 equals 10, 40 equals 40, 20 equals 20. Okay, so all three conditions are true, right? So now if I click on this, it'll say true. Okay. Now if I change just one of the conditions, okay, and I click on this again, now it's false, right? Okay, why is that? Well, because for that and operator, all of the conditions have to be true in order for the result to be true. All of the conditions have to be true, okay? All right, so now let's combine multiple or blocks, okay? Okay, so now we have, actually, let's just do three. Four is too much. Okay, that, put that, put that there. Now you have to be careful when you're inserting these blocks, you gotta make sure uh, to insert it when you see the highlights. See, when the diamond highlights, that's when you're gonna, <clears throat> that's where you wanna insert it. And the best thing to do is come from the right and go to the left. That's the best way. Because if you try to come from here, as you can see, look, it, it's hard to highlight, right? I'm trying to put this in the last one, it's not working. But if I come from the right to the left, it's very easy, okay? All right, so now, <clears throat> So what we're saying is, okay, 12 equals 10 or 40 equals 40 or 20 equals 20. So now if I click on this, it'll say true, okay? Why? Because one of the condition, one or more conditions are true. For the or block, you only need one condition to be true. So if I were to put this to 30, okay, 30 is not equal to 20, 12 is not equal to 10, but 40 is equal to 40. So now if I click on this, it'll say true right? Because this condition is true. Okay, so for the or block, you only need one condition to be true. All right, now what if we change this to 30? Okay. Now if I click on it, now it'll say false, right? Because none of the conditions are true. This is false, false, false. Okay, so the ultimate result is also going to be false. All right, so I hope you guys understand that. All right, so let's do one more exercise real quick, okay? Let's combine the AND block with the OR block, okay? So first, let's do this. Let's put this condition in here. Okay, 10 equals 10, 
and something else, okay? Then over here for the OR block, we're going to do 30 equals 40 or 20 equals 20, right? And we're, not, we're going to create this condition here. Then we're going to put this OR block inside the AND right here, okay? Like that. All right, so now what does this mean? Okay, so what we're saying is that, okay, 10 equals 10 and whatever the result of this whole thing is, right? Okay, you see that? This is our condition, right? This is where this whole condition goes in here, okay? But the way the way that the program works is it's going to check this condition first, and then it, we're going to add it together with that condition, okay? So what that means is, okay, so what that means is we're going to say 30 equals 40 or 20 equals 20, right? So that if I click on this, the result of this is true. So what's going to happen is this this result right here, true, is going to take place right here. It's going to say that's true. So it's going to say 10 equals 10, which is true, and true. So the total result, final result, is going to be true. Okay, so let's watch that here. So if I click on this, it says true. Okay. Now, what if I did 30 equals 20? Okay, what do you think is going to happen? Well, let's find out now says false okay why is that why is it false because because the result of this block okay this entire thing is false okay so when we put this inside the diamond here this becomes false okay so it'll say true and false right and because this is an and all, all the conditions have to be true, right? But if we have a true and a false, then the final result is going to be false, right? So that's why when I click on it, it says false, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Um, practice these if you don't quite understand them. All right, so the last thing that I want to talk about is the pick random block. The pick random block, basically, like the name says, it'll pick a random number right here from 1 to 10, right? So if I click on this block, it'll say six. If I click on it again, you get six again. Now I got 10, 10 again, nine, okay, so on and so forth. So it'll pick a random number between one to 10, including 10, right? Including 10 and including one, okay? So if I did, I said it one to 100, right? So now it'll pick something random between 1 and 100. Okay, so if I click on that, it says 47, 95, 64, 8. So it's a randomly picking a number, okay, in this range between 1 to 100. The other thing we can do, we can save this random number into a variable. So for example, let's say, um, let's say I wanted to set my variable, okay, to some random number. Right, I can do that. And then I can, let's put our variable here, okay? So now if I click on this, all right, then I click on my variable, 23, right? And then if I click on this again, and then I click on my variable, now it's 34, all right? So we're setting my variable to some random number, okay? And we're basically, we're saving this information pick random, we're saving this information to my variable, right? So if I do it again one more time, and then I click on my variable, it is now 15, okay? All right, guys, that's it for this lesson. Till next time, bye-bye.